loves him for her own And her love made Clifford grow so big That the Howards had to leave their home Clifford's the best friend anyone could know He's the greatest dog ever I really think so Clifford's so loyal He's there when you call I love Clifford, the big red dog So they packed up a family car And the Howards left the city They moved to Birdwell Island and their many new friends There to greet Clifford and Emily Clifford's so much fun, he's a friend to us all I love Clifford, the big red dog tell you about my very favorite memory. <clears throat> my Favorite Memory by Emily Elizabeth Howard. My favorite memory starts back when I was just a little girl, living in an apartment building in the city. Back then, I didn't have a dog, but I wanted one more than anything in the whole world. Someday, I'm gonna have a real dog, big and beautiful. Maybe an Irish setter with a shiny red coat or a big, tall, great game. Or maybe a common door. <laughs> then mom and dad won't need a mop. Then on my birthday, my parents told me they had a big <laughs> surprise. <Yeah. laughs> Happy yeah. birthday, Emily. Make a wish. Oh, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Emily. Emily. What'd you wish for, honey? I can't tell, or it won't come true. You didn't, by any chance, wish for a dog, did you? <gasps> That's exactly what I wished for. Well, Mr. Bradley's dog had a litter of puppies last month. And he'd like to give you one. If you want one, that is. Oh, yes, I do, I do. Thank you. Why, hello, Emily Elizabeth. Come on in and meet all the puppies. There's the proud mama. Oh, they're all so cute. <laughs> hello, little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> that little red dog is so cute. He's the one I want. Oh, I don't know, Emily Elizabeth. That's the runt of the litter. What does that mean? Well, he's the smallest of the bunch, and he'll always be small. But he needs me. Are you sure he's the one, honey? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> and I'm going to name him Clifford, my small red puppy. Welcome to your new home, Clifford. Taking care of a dog is a big responsibility, Emily. You'll have to feed him and play with him and take him for walks. Don't worry, Dad. I'll take good care of my Clifford. <laughs> I know you will. Oh, here's a collar for him. We got this collar before you picked little Clifford. <sighs> I hope it fits. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, no, it's too big. Wait, I know what to do. Oh, this will be perfect. Clifford, time to eat. There you are, boy. Uh-oh. You can't reach your food in that big bowl, can you? <laughs> well, we're just gonna have to think of something else, Clifford. This is better, huh? Dad, have you seen Clifford? Gee, no, Emily, I haven't. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> this little guy can fit just about anywhere. I hope he doesn't get himself into trouble. Ah, uh, don't worry, Dad. I'll take care of him. You're doing a great job. Come on, Emily. We've got to go. But, Mom, I want to say goodbye to Clifford. Oh, honey, we've got to go. We'll be back in just a minute. Thanks for the bread, Mr. Thompson. How much do I owe you? <gasps> oh, my! Clifford! Clifford! Oh, no! Emily, grab him! <laughs> What's going on? Don't worry, Mr. Thompson. I'll get him. Thompson, it won't happen again. Uh, Leopard and I promise. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Clifford didn't mean to cause trouble. He just kind of got scared with all those people in there. I know, dear. I didn't even know he was in your purse. Neither did I. He's so tiny. But I love him, Mom. Just the way he is. Of course you do, Emily. But sometimes I worry about him being so small. I'm just going to have to find a way to help him grow. I'm sure you will. Mom says it isn't good for a dog to be so small, Clifford. So you have to eat up and get big and strong. But remember, I love you no matter what size you are. Good night, Clifford. Clifford, I think you've grown. You're right, Emily Elizabeth. Clifford has been growing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, goodness. You keep growing like this, and I'll have to get you a new collar, Clifford. Isn't it great, Dad? Whoa, 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 whoa. Good night, Clifford. I love you so much. Anymore. You're a big red dog! Wow, 
I've never seen anything like it, Emily. That dog is huge. I know. Isn't it great? Well, yes. It's nice. But a small apartment in the city is no place for a big dog like Clifford. <gasps> but I love him. I know. So, it looks like we're all just gonna have to move. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dad. But how can we move him? He doesn't even fit through the door anymore. We'll think of something. <laughs> I told you taking care of this dog wasn't gonna be easy. But he sure is worth oh. it. <laughs> he sure is. Birdwell Island. Clifford was a big help when we moved into our new house. And we all made some great new friends. <laughs> and that's my favorite memory. The story of how I got Clifford. Woof, woof. My big red dog. Story, don't you? <laughs> I thought so. He's your favorite. Today's story is Speckle and the Sky High Apples. One day, Speckle, Ravi, Darnell, and Luna decided to pick some apples. On the way to the apple tree, they saw Reba playing on her pogo stick and invited her to join them. So she bounced along beside them. The apples on the tree were red and ripe and ready to be picked. Robbie tried to reach the apples, but the branches were too high. Speckle tried to climb the tree, but the trunk was too wide. Then Reba had an idea. Using her pogo stick, she bounced high up into the air, right up to the fattest apple of them all, and picked it. It looked like such great fun that everyone wanted to get their pogo sticks, too. Soon they were bouncing and picking and laughing together. And in no time at all, they had gathered a basket full of ripe, juicy apples. The end. That was a great story. Isn't reading fun? <laughs> Him. Everyone loves him now, but they didn't always. What do you mean? When people first saw how big Clifford was, they thought he was going to be a big problem. I remember the day we first moved here. Clifford had grown too big for us to live in the city anymore, so we packed up everything and headed for Birdwell Island. I can't wait to get there, Clifford! There'll be lots of room to play, 
and we'll make lots of new friends. Welcome to Birdwell Island. Thanks. My name is Pedro, and this is my good friend, Victor. We're the Howards. I'm Mark, and this is my wife, Caroline. Hello there. And I'm Emily Elizabeth. Well, hello, Emily Elizabeth. And this is Clifford, my big red dog. Oh, hello, Clifford. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Yikes. Come on, everyone. Let's go see our new house. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs> nice family. Big dog. And a very big dog could cause very big problems. They really thought Clifford was going to be a big problem? They sure did. But they didn't even know him. Sometimes people decide how they feel about someone before they get to know them. That's not fair. Clifford is a great dog. I know, but back then, Victor and Pedro weren't the only ones who thought he was going to be a big problem. Dear, let's go welcome our new neighbors. Yes, dear. Yoo hoo! Hello there. Well, hello. I'm Violet Bleakman. This is my husband, Horace. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. I'm Caroline, and this is Mark. Hello. This is Emily Elizabeth. Want to meet my dog? Oh, well, sure, of course. Clifford! Woof. Woof, woof, woof. Ah! Oh, oh, my goodness! Oh, oh Horace, that, 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 that dog is huge! And a huge dog means huge trouble. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, have a good day. <sighs> there it is, Caroline, the seashell. Oh, isn't it exciting, Mark? Our very own store. Hello, I'm Jetta Handover. Pleased to meet you, Jetta. Oh, we have all kinds of wonderful things. <laughs> Including our daughter, Emily Elizabeth. Mm. Hello, Emily Elizabeth. Hello. <gasps> what a beautiful dog. Hmm. Yes, I know. His name is Machiavelli. He's the biggest, bravest, fastest dog on the island. That's great. Want to meet my dog? Your dog 
dog is too big, Emily Elizabeth. I don't think he belongs on our island. Oh. You do belong here, Clifford. I just wish people would take the time to get to know you better. <laughs> Good boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That mammoth mutt is going to be nothing but trouble. They seem like such a sweet family, but their dog is just too gosh darn big. And he slobbers, too. Look, it's a fire. Looks like someone didn't put out their campfire very well. I just hope we have enough water in our tank to stop it. What's happening? Yeah, what is happening? What's going on here? Chief Gamble, can we help? Sure you can. The water tank on our truck's not big enough. We'll need to use those buckets to bring water over from the pond. Right, we're on our way. Okay, everyone, pass the bucket of water down. Keep it moving. Here it comes. Almost there. Ah. Oh, no. More water. We need more water. Maybe Clifford and I can help. That's real sweet of you to offer, but I don't think so. Oh. Look, that giant dog's drinking all the water. We won't be able to put out the fire. Out the fire. I'll be doggone. That big dog put the fire out. Well, Pedro, I guess we were wrong about this big dog causing big problems. Yeah, he never really caused any problems, big or small. And we never took the time to really get to know him. Let's start right now. Hello, Clifford. Welcome to Birdwell Island. Well, Good dog. Well, I'm glad you're you here. <laughs> so you see, Charlie, all those people who thought Clifford was a big problem learned something from him. Yeah, they learned that you have to give someone a chance and really get to know them before you decide if you like them or not. Right, Clifford? <laughs> now everyone loves Clifford, my big red dog. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is play fair. Hurry, T-Bone. My turn is next. Okay, Cleo. I'm next, I'm next, I'm next, and then it's Max's turn. Okay, Cleo, your turn. Oh, boy. Hey. Whoa. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't fair. You're right. We're supposed to take turns. That's the fair way to play. Oops, 
sorry. It's your turn, Cleo. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. You're welcome. Playing fair makes playing fun. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is play fair. Clifford? Ruff, ruff. They smell great, don't they, boy? This morning, I'm sure of it. Hi, Jetta. Oh, hi, Emily Elizabeth. What you doing, Jetta? I can't believe it. I've lost my most favorite sweater in the whole entire world. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe Clifford and I could help you look for it. Dogs are great at finding things by using their sense of smell. Right, boy? Well, okay. I'll try anything if it'll help me find my favorite sweater. I'll get Mac to help, too. Mac! Oh, Mac! Where are you, Mac? Mac, I need you to help me find my sweater! I know what'll get him to come. Mac! I've got a tummy yummy for you. Where could he be? I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Well, first my sweater, not my dog. Mac always comes for a tummy yummy. Always. I'll help you look around here for him, and maybe Clifford can check around town. <laughs> Where could Mac be? Play! 
Hi, Cleo. You haven't seen Mac around, have you? No. Why? Is he missing? Yeah. Want to help look for him? I'm right behind you, big guy. Mac could be here at the beach. I don't see him. Maybe he's out in the water. I'll go check. Hi, Clifford. Hey, T-Bone. What's Cleo doing? Mac! Oh, Mac! Mac! Oh, Mac! Whoa! Cleo's looking for Mac. Is he missing? Yep. Well, he's not in the water. <laughs> hey, Mac likes to play in the woods behind his house. Maybe he's in there. Good thinking, T-Bone. Follow me, guys. Clifford! Clifford. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Maybe I should follow you. This is just so weird. Mac never leaves my yard until after he's had his lunch. Don't worry, we'll find him. I hope so. Doesn't he know how worried I am? Mac! Here, Mac! 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 You in here? Mac! 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 Coming. Wow, you look like a giant tree. <laughs> you sure do. Fur is stuck on the thorns. What am I gonna do? Grab onto my leg and I'll pull you off the shrub. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Mr. Kibble could come out and cut off all your fur instead. Never mind, I'll grab his leg. One, two, three! <laughs> I guess it didn't work. I guess not. Yes, it did! Look! I... Mac, here you are. We've been looking everywhere for you. You should go home, Mac. Jenna is worried about you. I can't go home. Look. <gasps> is that Jenna's sweater? Yeah, she's gonna be so mad at me. What happened? It was an accident. I saw the sweater on the porch, and I was bringing it to Jetta, but then one of my claws got stuck, and it, it pulled the string, and the whole sweater started falling apart. <sighs> That's why I can't go home. So what are you going to do? I'm going to live out here. What do you do for food? Well... I didn't think about that. Mac, you should go home and show Jetta that you're sorry. Oh, I don't know. She really misses you, Mac. You think so? I know so. Well, I don't want her to worry. I'm going home. Great. I love him 
so much. Let's go back to your house, Jetta. Maybe Mac came home while we were gone. Yeah, maybe Mac came home. See anyone coming yet, Clifford? Not yet. I don't know if I can do this. I don't want Jetta to be mad at me. Everyone makes mistakes, Mac. Yeah, she might be upset at first, but she'll forgive you. Here they come. Bye bye. Mac! Mac! <laughs> yeah. You can't keep running away, Mac. <sighs> okay. the sweater, that's for sure. But I don't ever want you to run away again. You are so much more important to me than some dumb old sweater. Oh, I love you, Mac. I'm sure he didn't mean to rip your sweater, Jetta. <laughs> Come to think of it, now I can buy a brand new sweater. Come on, Mac. Let's go tell Mom we need to go shopping. Don't you ever run away either, Clifford. Remember, there's nothing you could ever do that could make me stop loving you. You're my big red dog. Don't you? <laughs> I thought so. He's your favorite. Today's story is Speckle and the Pirate Ship. Speckle, Ravi, Luna, and Darnell were at their favorite picnic spot when Speckle started a game of pretend. He imagined he was a brave buccaneer sailing on the high seas, and Luna's backpack was his bag of gold. Soon everyone joined in. Speckle was the captain, and his friends were his fearless crew. With the sun shining and the waves splashing, it was a grand day to be a buccaneer. Then Ravi saw another ship approaching. Who could it be? It was Reba the Red, with a treasure map to share. They studied the map, then steered their ship to follow the treasure map's course, imagining the wonderful adventures they would find along the way. The end. That was a great story. Isn't reading fun? <laughs> special Halloween movie. There, perfect. <laughs> you look just like a lion. <gasps> Emily, Clifford, time to go. <gasps> oh no, a lion. Oh, quick, run for your life. 
<laughs> oh! Oh! Woof! Hmm? Woof! <laughs> Don't worry. You didn't really scare them. They're just pretending to be scared. It's all part of the fun of Halloween, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you and Clifford look terrific. See? Mom and Dad knew it was you all the time. Mm -hmm. Come on, everyone. We better go, or we're going to miss the movie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh! Ooh. Doesn't Mac look adorable? He's not adorable. He's Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> oh, of course. Do you like our costumes? Believe it or not, I had all of this stuff in my closet. Isn't that way out? <laughs> way, way out. <gasps> Ooh, look. Now there's a scary sight. Who can that be? Jay, let's see. Who on Birdwell Island is two stories tall? You, Mr. Big Scary Lion. Did you escape from the zoo? <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Diller. Happy Halloween. Look, there's some more monsters. Come on, girls, let's go say hello. <laughs> wow, that was pretty scary, Mac. Yeah, I can be pretty scary. Uh, of course, Jetta and I aren't scared of anything. Nothing? Not even that? Hey, looking good, T-Bone. Woof! You look almost as spooky as the ghost dog of Birdwell Island. The ghost dog of Birdwell Island? Oh. <laughs> There's no such thing as ghosts. Everyone knows that. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows that. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Will everyone please take their seats so we can begin our very scary Halloween movie, The Boo Hoo? <laughs> oh, hurry up, Violet. I want to get a good spot. Well, I don't want to break my stem, you know. Hello, Emily, dear. I see you brought Clifford with you. Yep, he's never seen a movie before, especially a scary one. There are two good seats over there, Violet. Let's go. These movies don't scare me. Nothing scares Mac and me. Right, boy? <laughs> Boo. Ah! That didn't scare me, Charlie. Uh, come on, Jetta. Everyone gets scared. Charlie, Clifford and I are gonna go sit in the back. We don't want to block anyone's view. Great! I'll come with you. Either. Well, this is the best part about Halloween. That movie sure was fun, with all those spooky ghosts and stuff. 
<laughs> well, it didn't scare me one bit. Nothing ever scares me. That's too bad, Jetta. Sometimes it's fun to be scared on Halloween. Especially when you know it's only pretend. Hey, Emily, where's your big red lion? He's still at the beach trying to figure out how all those people got into the movie screen. Did I scare you all tonight with my big teeth? <laughs> you sure did, Pedro. Oh, he did not. Come on, Jetta. Aren't you just a little bit frightened? Brrr. Not even a little bit. I've had enough of Halloween. I'm ready to go home now. Okay, Jetta. Pedro and I will walk with you. But only if you promise to protect us from all those big hairy monsters out there. <laughs> 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 Whatever. Let's go, Mac. Night, everybody. Night. Adios. Hey, what was that? Ah, what's going on? I can't see anything. What happened to the lights? Getting late. I suppose we should head on home. Oh, we have to wait for Clifford. Help! Ghost! Run! There's a ghost out there! Run! Well, look at that. Jetta's pretending to be scared. That's the spirit, Jetta. It's the ghost dog of Birdwell Island. I thought you said there's no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> It's white, and it's coming this way! Jet is not pretending. There really is something big out there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. <gasps> it's the ghost! Get out of the way! Oh, 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 oh. Let's get out of here, Violet. I'm right beside you, Horace. <laughs> Dog, my sweet baby cupcake is. Where is everybody? Hmm. I wonder where Emily Elizabeth could be. Look at that. It's Clifford. <laughs> it's not a ghost. <laughs> it's a big red dog. Oh, it's just oh, it's just oh, it's just <laughs> well, I have to admit, I've never been so glad to see that dog in my life. Poor Clifford. The sheet they used for the movie screen must have fallen on top of him. It's okay, Clifford. Everything's okay. I'm right here. Is the ghost gone yet? <laughs> what difference does it make? Nothing scares you and Mac, right, Jetta? We weren't scared. Then why are you under the table? Well, uh, <laughs> Jetta. <gasps> it's okay to be scared. Everyone gets scared sometimes, even big, brave dogs like Mac. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess you're right. Mac really was scared, wasn't he? So is Clifford. Next year, we're gonna use a sheet for his costume. Next Halloween, he'll be Clifford, my big white ghost.
Wow, T-Bone, your sandcastle looks great. It sure does, T. Thanks, I did the whole thing all by myself. Clifford and I know that it's always important to be thoughtful of other people's feelings and ideas. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is respect. You know what would make it even better, though? A great big flag! No, I think it's great just the way it is. There. Now it needs a big wall. No, it doesn't. Cleo, this is T-Bone's castle. Before you change it, you should find out if he wants you to. I'm sorry. Next time I'll remember to ask first. Sometimes our friends have thoughts and feelings that are different from ours. When we take the time to find out about those differences, it shows how much we care. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is respect. you've all done in today's spelling contest. But now, we're down to our last two contestants, Emily Elizabeth and Jetta. Emily, spell the word monkey. Monkey. M-O-N-K-E-E. -E. Monkey. Oh, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. Jetta, spell the word monkey. Monkey. M O N. K-E-Y. Monkey. Correct. Yes! Congratulations, Jetta. You're the winner of our spelling contest. Great job, Jetta. Your medal sure is beautiful. I know. Charlie? Hello. Wanna play soccer? Sounds fun, but Mom and I are going shopping today. I'll play, but I better take off my spelling champion medal first. <laughs> oh, would you please put this over on the bench for me, Emily Elizabeth? I don't want to lose my beautiful, shiny medal while I'm playing soccer. Come on, let's play. No 
tummy yummies in there. Just my shiny new medal. Hmm. <gasps> my medal! It's gone! And I bet I know who took it. New fried bone is great! Yeah. I wish Cleo was here to help us chew it up. Hi, you guys. Wow. How'd you do that, Clifford? Sorry I'm late. I was at the groomers. Your new bow sure is shiny. You could send a secret message with that bow. A secret message? With a bow? Yeah, like Tiny did in the book Emily read me last night. I'd love to be a detective like that. Wouldn't you, T? I don't know. Would I have to wear a shiny bow? Look, there's Jetta and Mac. Jetta looks kind of mad. Hey, Mac. What's going on? Oh, not much. Emily Elizabeth just stole Jetta's spelling medal, that's all. What? She took it from Jetta's sweater pocket at the park. Emily Elizabeth would never take her medal. I would never take your medal. You were jealous because I won the spelling contest, so you stole it. I did not. Maybe you dropped it on the way home or something. Are you sure you didn't take it? I promise. I just can't believe it's gone. Well, I could help you look for it, Jetta. Okay. Let's go, Machiavelli. We're gonna find my medal. Even though we already know who has it. Mac really thinks Emily Elizabeth stole that medal. We know Emily Elizabeth didn't take it. I'm sure they'll find it. Wait, what if we found it? How could we do that? We could be detectives. Ooh, detectives, I love it. We'll start by looking around the park. Hold Wait. on. This was the last place Jetta saw the metal. Do you smell anything? Like what? Like clues, T-Bone. What's a clue? Anything that will help lead us to Jetta's missing metal. Oh! <laughs> Is this a clue? Maybe. Hey, there's a really strong smell here. Whoa! This is real close to the last place Jetta saw her medal. Come on, let's follow the smell. Cleo sure is a good sniffer. I think she found Jetta's medal. Stop sniffing me and go away. That's not Jetta's medal. That's Jetta. Whoa. Well, there's no medal over there. That's for sure. Come on, let's go back to my house and work on a new plan. I'm sorry we didn't find your medal. My neck is just so bare without it. Are you absolutely positively sure you didn't take it, Emily? I said I didn't, and it really hurts my feelings when you keep asking. But when I gave you my sweater, it was in the pocket. And when I looked in my pocket later, it was gone. I 
I don't take things that don't belong to me. Hey, where's my mirror? Give it back, Emily, right now. Huh? I didn't take it. Just give it back. I don't have it, Jetta. I'm going home. Oh, there's got to be a way to prove Emily Elizabeth didn't take the medal. She did it again, Clifford. This time she stole Jetta's mirror. Cut it out, Mac. It had to be her. She was the only one there. You think she could have, Clifford? I mean, maybe she couldn't resist. No. Emily Elizabeth didn't do anything wrong. But I'm going to find out who did. Someone's taking things that don't belong to them, and we're going to catch them. Do you really think someone will try and steal your bow, Cleo? Sure. Humans love shiny stuff. Look, it's Emily Elizabeth. She's going to take it. No, she won't. You lost your bow, Cleo. Let me put it back in your hair for you. There. It looks great. See ya. She didn't take it, Cleo. No, but I wish someone had. Come on, guys. Let's put the bow back out on the sidewalk again and see if someone else takes it. Oh, my gosh! It's gone! Aunt Molly Elizabeth must have changed her mind and come back to take it. She didn't take anything. Okay, Emily Elizabeth. I'm going to give you one more chance to return my medal and my mirror. I didn't take it, Jetta. Why won't you believe me? We've got to find that medal. Look, there's a feather here where Cleo's bow used to be. Just like the one in the park. <coughs> and that sound, I heard it at the ferry dock, and I heard it again when Cleo's bow was taken. Good work, T. Those are just the clues we need. It's that bird that's making all the noise, Clifford. Wow. Emily Elizabeth has to see this. Clifford, it's Jetta's medal. You found it. You found it. And look, there's her mirror and Cleo's shiny bow, too. What are you doing, Emily Elizabeth? Clifford found your medal, Jetta. <gasps> what? That old seabird must have taken it. Some birds are very attracted to shiny things. <gasps> oh, this is amazing! I told you I didn't take it, Jetta. I wish you'd believed me. Oh, I'm sorry. It just seemed like you did. But I guess it wasn't very fair of me to think that when I didn't know for sure. At least there was one friend who never doubted me. The most loyal friend I could ever have, Clifford. Story, don't you? <laughs> I thought so. He's your favorite. Today's story is Speckle and the Really Good Book. One day, Speckle was walking home with a new book. It was one he'd wanted to read for a long time, so he was delighted to have it at last. Darnell saw Speckle's book and said he wanted to read it as well. Speckle said he'd gladly loan it to Darnell when he was done. Then Luna saw the book. It was on her list of books she wanted to read. Speckle happily agreed to lend it to Luna when Darnell was done. When Robbie and Reba saw the book, they wanted to read it too. And they wondered how long it'd be until they'd get their turn. Then Speckle smiled and said he knew how they could all enjoy the book with no waiting at all. He'd read it out loud to them right now. Luna, Darnell, Robbie, and Reba agreed that that was a wonderful idea. And so, with listening ears on, they gathered round to discover the new book together. The end. That was a great story. Isn't reading fun? <laughs> Hard.
party ever. Thanks for helping me make this stuff for my party, Charlie. This is gonna be the best birthday I ever had. No problem. Everyone will love these newspaper sea captain hats. Hoist stinker and trim the sails, first mate Emily. Aye, aye, Captain Charlie. We're off to search for a great white whale. Woof, woof. <laughs> make that a great red whale. These beans in a paper cut make great music. Emily, have you seen my morning paper? Has anyone seen the bowl of beans I left on the counter? I was gonna make soup. Here's your newspaper, Dad. <laughs> and here are your beans, Mrs. Howard. I guess we should have asked if we could use these things first. I guess so. Sorry. Uh, but you told us we could use stuff around the house for my birthday party decorations. That's true. <sighs> we did. <laughs> I think it's wonderful that you two are making all these things for your party by yourselves. Charlie and I are even making up the games. We're making everything. Except the cake, of course. I'm making the cake. Emily's absolute favorite, chocolate swirl with vanilla frosting. Mmm, thanks, Mom. And I'll get these leaves raked up nice and tidy for you. That's okay, Dad. Clifford's gonna take care of that for us. I'll get started on that cake. Great. Can I lick the bowl? <laughs> Jumping in leaves sure is fun. Let's make it one of the party games. Cool. You have got to be kidding. No moon bounce? No pony rides? Not even a water slide? And you call that a party? Please. All the stuff at my birthday is going to be made by Charlie and me, Jetta. Obviously. You don't have to buy stuff to have a great party. The important thing is to have fun. Exactly. And you know what makes a party fun? Sparkle, excitement, pizzazz. Pizzazz? Pizzazz? You know, something really special. I'm sorry, Emily, but what you've got here is just boring. Oh, that's not true. We're gonna bob for apples, and we have party hats, and musical instruments. Uh-huh. Well, I wouldn't want to go to a party like that, and I don't think anyone else will either. I'm sorry. Uh, see you later, Emily Elizabeth. What if she's right, Charlie? What if my party doesn't have pizzazz? Don't listen to her, Emily. This party's going to be great. And we made it all ourselves. You're right. It's like you said, the important thing is to have fun. It's also important to have friends. So we better deliver these invitations. We can ride our bikes. I know a faster way. Elizabeth to invite me to her boring old party. Oh well, I have nothing better to do that day. 
Okay, Clifford. Next stop is Jetta's house. Why are you going to invite Jetta? She's my friend. She always comes to my birthday parties. But she said herself she wouldn't want to come to a boring party like yours. She did say she wouldn't want to come, didn't she? Okay, Clifford. We'll skip Jetta's house. She's not inviting me. Hey, hold it, you guys. It's Jetta. She must have seen us go by her house. I bet we hurt her feelings by not inviting her. Let's invite her now. Okay, if she wants to come. Hey, Jetta. Hello, Emily Elizabeth. Jetta, I want to... I hope you aren't going to invite me to your party. Well, yes, I... Oh, I'm so sorry, but I've got another party to go to in the city. An amazing party with a water slide and all kinds of pizzazz. Really? Mm-hmm. So, thanks, but no thanks. I guess you don't need to worry about Jetta anymore. She's got another party to go to. Yeah, I guess so. But I still wish she'd come to ours. Happy birthday, Emily. Thanks, Mary. Hey, Emily. Hi, Vaz. Did you bring the tub I wanted to borrow for the apple bobbing? Oh, no. I forgot it on my front porch. I'll go get it. Okay. Wait, I think Clifford wants to help. Thanks, Clifford. Hi, Mac. What are you doing here? I live here, remember? I just thought you'd be in the city at the big party with Jetta. Big party? Oh, Jetta's not going to any party. She's not? Nope. She's in the house, moping around with nothing to do. Really? Hmm. I'll see you later, Mac. <laughs> Thank you so much, Clifford. Now we can bob for apples. Sure is a great birthday party, Emily. Yeah, it looks like everyone is really having fun. What is it, Clifford? He wants to show us something. I think it's time to re-invite Jetta to the party, Charlie. I think you're right, Emily. Hi, Jetta. Oh, uh, <clears throat> hello, Emily Elizabeth. I'm just, uh, waiting to be picked up from a big party. <laughs> Gee, Jetta, I was hoping you'd change your mind and you could come to my birthday party. Oh? Mm-hmm. Because I thought about it and you were right. My party did need pizzazz. So I decided to add a water slide after all. You did? <gasps> a water slide? Really? Well, then, uh, I suppose I could cancel my other plans. Great. I've got to hand it to you, Emily Elizabeth. You and Charlie really made this party into something special. Thanks, Dad. And the best part is, you thought of everything yourselves. Jetta, good thing you took my advice about adding a little pizzazz. It was pretty good advice. Thank you for inviting me, Emily Elizabeth. I guess a homemade party can be lots of fun. Okay, kids, 
How about some birthday cake? Yeah! Make a wish and blow out the candles, Emily. Okay. Happy birthday, Emily! Oops, missed one. Clifford, no! <laughs> How's that for possession? Clifford, this is my best party ever. <laughs> Clifford and I know that playing is a lot more fun when we share with our friends. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is sharing. It's mine! Uh, no, it's mine! No, oh, it's mine! Uh, mine! I say it's mine! Uh, whoa! Oh. What's going on, T-Bone? I found this toy first, but Cleo thinks it belongs to her. No way! I found it and it's mine! Maybe instead of fighting over that toy, we can all share mine. Well, okay. Great! Here you go, Cleo! <laughs> Catch, big guy! Oof, oof, oof. This is fun! Yeah! Yeah! When friends share with friends, everyone is happy. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is sharing. <laughs> <laughs>